Welcome back to What You Will Learn. My name is Adam Ashton. G'day, g'day, g'day. My name is Adam Jones. Today we're reviewing a book called Illuminate by Nancy Duarte and Patty Sanchez. Uh, subtitled, Ignite Change Through Speeches, Stories, Ceremonies and Symbols. Yeah. I mean, give us, a, I guess, a brief overview of, of the book. Mate, so it's, it's, I think the book's a lot for, say, the next Gandhi or the next... <laughs> The next uh, Martin Luther King kind of thing. It's just basically how to create like a, almost like a movement a movement level kind of mm. speech or yeah. Yeah, it's big. It's not Mate, for explain it better than I did. No, no, that's that's good. It is some some top level stuff. It's really top level stuff. So it's through um yeah, she's got a process of creating a huge movement and she showed mm. how like Steve Jobs did it a few times, Gandhi and, and Martin yeah, Luther nice. King and so forth. So basically there's sort of like five stages to that movement which we'll get into and at each stage there's I guess four tools or four strategies you use um, and yeah they apply are applied differently at each stage which we'll get uh, stuck into so just a little bit about Nancy and Patty it says at the start uh, Nancy is more of a leader so she says leaders see the future future so ability to anticipate what's ahead as if the future is illuminated for her she says in a way that others can't see and uh, she goes through dramatic periods of reinvention and constant reinvention. Like throughout the book, there's always this mm. this S curve upon the S curve kind yeah. of thing of reinvention and growth. And then you got the other side is Patty, who she's a seer of the future, and her gif- gift is to see things from another person's perspective. And she says she has learned the hard way that coming up with ideas is easily, and getting others to embrace them is not. Nice. I definitely concur with that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. That's a hard part, isn't it? <laughs> um, so yeah, well, I, mate, I like the uh, the torchbearer's calling. Yeah, which was, I guess, that just at the very start before the book started. Uh, just I'll read the last, uh, read the last it, yeah. of the four, the full thing. I'll yeah. just get. Oh, you yeah, go to like. I'll get yeah. the last bit. It was good. It was. It's only one page, but yeah. So some say being a torchbearer is a burden. Some say it's a blessing. Either way, those who light the path are the ones who change the world. Mm. So I think that's uh, that's where we're headed, mate. We've got to change the world. Yeah. So these guys, her company, if, um, if people aren't familiar, they made the slides for Al Gore's Inconvenient Truth, mm. and I think they did some slides for Steve Jobs or whatever. So these these were pretty big mo- movement type of uh, projects they took on. Yeah, massive. Yeah. Uh, massive, very well known. Love it, man. So uh, chapter one says, <coughs> leaders move others forward. And so I guess they're saying that each all change comes as this S curve that you mentioned. Mm-hmm. We got it up on the the video for anyone looking. And there's always so you've got you. It's a bit flat, and then you start to see growth happen, and then it flattens off again. Yeah, like that sigmoid shape from limits to growth. Yeah, and then it's sort of like when you get to that flat point, it's like how do we get to the next bit? Is you have to reimagine everything, and you sort of start a new S curve. Mm. So start, grow, mature. And then you get there, then you redream, start growing mature, yeah. and so forth. And if you don't redream, then you just it, it kind of points out that you're going to just go down to the yeah exactly to the shit basically to and death yeah death. So yeah, so most would um, so most of the people you're trying to create a movement for would rather stick with the task at hand and get through their own pile of work than jump into something yeah. new. And I think that um, is well documented in like. A, uh, who've moved my cheese and yeah. you know, books like that. People don't want to change. They're happy with what they're doing. It's comfortable and safe to stay with what you're doing. And, you know, if they think that the change is hard or risky, then mm-hmm. they're, they're going to, I guess, fight it, avoid so, it. So, yeah, th- this is what the toolkit, this is what she calls the torchbearer's toolkit is all about, is helping those people who don't want to change, mm-hmm. help them through it into a yeah, better, better future. Yeah, so she said it's always like, it's like the five-stage um, venture scape, she calls it. So the first stage is the dream. So that's when you're coming up with a dream. Next is the leap. So that's when you take that take that plunge, mm-hmm. and uh, it might get better, it might get worse, but you're taking that leap. And as you're building your way up through the S curve, you have to go the fight stage. So you're faced with opposition, and the trek becomes difficult. Then you hit the climb. So you've got to keep going, keep climbing, and then you get mm-hmm. to that arrive. Yep. And when you get to that top and arrive, that's when you redream and start all over again. That's it. So we're trying to unpack that. A bit. So that's the what does she call it? The, the venture scape. The venture scape. So that's dream, what, leap, yeah. fight, climb, arrive. Yeah, absolutely love it. So she 
she uses a lot of Lord of the Rings kind of. Um, yeah, have you seen it? Yeah, I haven't seen any of it, so I missed. I sort of missed some of that, but yeah, mate, they're fucking epic adventures. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So there's this this really hot Alvin princess chick <laughs> who rocks up to Frodo she and says, um, so yeah, you know, it's the whole world's fucked basically. <laughs> the, you know, there's these goblins or whatever coming, coming from Mordor and all that kind of stuff. But this princess comes and says, uh, you know, this t- to Frodo, this task was appointed to you and if you do not find a way, then no one will. And I'm, <laughs> I'm trying to speak like it. <laughs> <laughs> Then, uh, then, he, then he says, then I know what I must do. It's just I'm afraid to do it. Mm. She replies, even the smallest person can change the course of the future. So and then she has this big gift giving ceremony and she gives Frodo this crystal thing filled with light saying, you'll shine brighter when night is about you. May it light you in dark places. So she says this through hey, this. This is, a pretty, this is some deep shit. Deep shit, isn't it? This is really yeah. deep shit. I might have to give it. Oh, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know if I give it a watch, but it's some good shit. No, I give it a watch. So the light, um, the light you carry is expressed through speeches, stories, ceremonies, symbols, yep. culled from your own experience. So yep. you're like the um, you're like the really hot angel chick <laughs> of Lord of the Rings. <laughs> no, you was in like the listener. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, fuck, I thought you meant me. Nah, um, <laughs> <laughs> fuck. <laughs> um, but it is good. So sort of at each chapter, she gives like uh, examples of that and she'll highlight the different speeches, ceremonies, symbols they use and things like that. Yeah. But yeah, chapter two is listen empathetically to light the path. So you got to see, so you're going on this journey that we talked about, you know, you're fighting, you're climbing, you're going through this journey. You as the leader, you want to go on this journey, but you need to see the journey through the traveler's eyes as well. Yeah. So the people you're bringing along with you, you need to see it as they're seeing it. So you need to listen empathetically. Yeah. So whether you're trying to get your team on board, asking for investors, convincing customers to buy your product or whatever you're trying to do, mm. yeah, you just have to, to be able to listen empathetically and, and uh, yeah. create a connection. Be transparent, share information openly, and you need to build that solidarity and connectedness. So you listen first, and after you've listened and understood, that's when you take on that role and become the torchbearer. And so you got to think how they're thinking. So imagine their thoughts moving from the present to the future, so where they are now and where you want them to get to. Think about what's going to challenge them. Think about how they feel. So... Imagine all the emotions, mm. you know, your dream might put on your travellers. She calls that the people you're trying the to travelers. lead. The travellers. The travellers. It's a bit um, pejorative. To say. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, how will the challenges affect their mood and motivation? And then do, imagine their potential actions walking through the steps that you want them all to take. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, nice. And uh, she says as well that each, like change is always going to affect different people differently. So mm-hmm. some might benefit, some might not benefit. So you need to analyze the gains and losses for everyone. So there's a bunch of rewards that could come from it. There's a bunch of sacrifices that people need to make. So you need to try and um, show them that the rewards outweigh the sacrifices. Yep. Chapter three, man. Chapter three. Was the torchbearer's toolkit. So this is where it gets into the, the four things that we mentioned there. Yep. So you got your speeches. Uh, stories, ceremonies, and symbols. Yeah. So they're the, uh, the that's your toolkit. But basically, she says that everyone is on the spectrum uh, of resistant to committed. Mm. So you're going to fall somewhere between completely resistant to change and completely committed to the change, and everyone's somewhere in between those. So you need to tweak your speeches, stories, yeah. ceremonies, and symbols so, to fit those. So with speeches, you have the opportunity to explain your ideas and directly address. All the resistance, which you've already thought out, which you're going to be from your travellers. And with the speeches, you can contrast what is, so what currently is, and you contrast that with what could be. Yep. Yep, definitely. So that's with uh, yeah, telling stories as well. Is have So the way to tell a story to your, to your travellers is say what is right now, just uh, you know, black and white, plain English, what could be, mm-hmm. and then, yeah, the, the, uh, the new bliss, so yep. what what needs to be resolved, I guess, together. Yeah, nice. And they, they say another good story arc, I guess, is the story of the protagonist that's undergone a transformation and it's sort of like they try and then they fail and then they overcome this uh, this somewhat seemingly uh, incurable <laughs> failure that they've had. Mm. But stories connect to the heart and the mind. Yeah. Another one, hold, hold ceremonies. So It's something that... I think like Steve Jobs it mentions at some stage in the book, you know, when he was 
saying like one old platform was dead for Apple. He held a big he held a big ceremony with a big coffin in the middle. To show, oh. You know, <laughs> something like that. You didn't read that part, mate? No, I'm, I skipped over that. One. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but um, yeah, so, yeah, those those big physical uh, public ceremonies of uh, yeah. presenting something new to someone or killing something yeah, <laughs> publicly, <laughs> uh, and use symbols. So. The yeah. symbols can be visual, spatial, physical, or auditory. So if you're doing a speech, you might pull out um pull out the cross if you want to be like a religious yeah. dude or something. I don't know. Yeah. Or and so but basically with that spectrum and with these four tools that we've got here, is that, as we said, people are always weighing up the sacrifices versus the rewards. So if people are... You want to use motivating uh, stories and speeches and ceremonies and symbols to move them towards being more committed, and you want to use warning uh, speeches, stories, ceremonies, and symbols to move them away from being resistant. Mm. So obviously, you're always wanting to move them away from resistant and towards committed. Yeah. So I reckon we'll, um, we'll go through the next ones pretty quick, yeah, because it's... Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty... Yeah. So part one of our, which is chapter four, is dream. So that's part one of the venture scape. Yeah. And so this is where you're determining the direction that you want to go, and you have to declare a compelling vision that instills a longing to get there. Yeah. Um, chapter five. We'll fly through it now. We'll oh, okay. I don't know any more on that. But we've got. Um, we'll... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, fly anyway, through do it, mate. Fly through it. Yeah, fly through it. And then we'll do a yeah. case study, maybe. Yeah. Chapter five. Leap. So once you've, you know, you dreamt it up, you leap, you leap, and plunging into the unknown doesn't phase you like as the leader because you've been historically been successful swimming in murky waters. She reckons. So, but you know, some of your travellers are like risky like you and will just leap straight away and some are going to be resistant to change. Nice. Chapter six is fight, the moment of bravery. So this is where you've got some kind of enemy. So if you portray your enemy, show that show your travelers that the enemy is beatable, build them up, get them ready for the fight that's coming ahead. Yeah. And next is climb, so which you've, you've talked about. Uh, arrive. And, and each of these chapters, she's got a, a case study which she talks about Martin Luther King and all that. And, um, and and then ch- and then redream yeah yeah so do you want to do the would we'll go through the how Apple did it page two sixty four maybe yep uh, yep take it away but I'll yeah so for each of those stages she says how so she gives examples of how you use speeches to motivate and to warn how you use ceremonies to motivate and to warn how you use stories to motivate and warn mm-hmm. and how you use symbols to motivate and warn mate give us this uh, case study yeah so in t- Fuck, what date was it? <laughs> um, in the dream phase. So, she, so you know, I think it was 1994, Apple... So, uh, when Apple was starting to struggle and they finally got Steve Jobs back, this is how Steve Jobs basically... Yeah, I reckon, just quickly, I reckon they need him back again. Yeah, fuck no. <laughs> Apple's cool. But Mate, yeah. we need, we're going to make a petition up. Bring back Jobs. <laughs> Bring back Jobs. Because we, we both use Apple products, right? Yeah. My but, iPhone just died this week. And my fucking iPhone 7 sucks. <laughs> I hate it. It's just a fucking pain in the ass. You can't you can't charge it and you can't listen at the same yeah, time. Yeah, that's stupid, mate. That's bring back jobs. Bring back jobs. We, I reckon they should bring back jobs. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so nineteen ninety four when they brought back jobs, they you know they were obviously struggling and, and jobs had a big task at hand. So what they did is they changed their whole developing <clears throat> their developing system they were on. So mm-hmm. it was a huge change that all their developers had to go through with from the to the iOS platform or, or something along those lines. Yeah. So obviously he had early adopters mm-hmm. through to the late. What are the late adopters called? The people who the laggards. The laggards. Yeah. So in the dream phase, what he did was in Macworld 1997, Jobs announces Apple's dream for developers to provide relevant, compelling solutions that customers can only get from Apple. So he mm-hmm. provides this huge dream of where they want to be. Yeah. Yeah. That's a compelling vision of the future, that yep. dream, setting it all up. Yep. Next was in, in the leap phase, so when he had to do the big leap. Apple has to kill features in the classic OS that developers loved, which you know everyone mm-hmm. gets really pissed off and angry. And he hosts a Q&A in 1998, 1998 and tells developers that the features Apple killed will make the OS healthier. Yeah, so that's the, the leap phase where he's realized the dream and they've taken the leap. And there might have been some short-term losses, a lot of sacrifices early on, but uh, he's got the dream. He knows where they're going. Yeah. Next is fight. So he's you know he's done it. He's killed the old stuff and all that. Had the coffin ceremony. 
Um, did he or, or did it come later? I think that comes later, oh, actually. Oh, sorry, mate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, fight. So, Apple launches. This is when they launched that huge Think Different campaign as a mm-hmm. rallying cry, reminding everyone that Apple honors those who think different and move this forward. Uh, also, in the fight stage, developers push back on Apple's new, a- new OS because it requires them to rebuild their software from scratch. Mm. So, everyone's cracking the shits at this stage. Mm. And that's the fight. He's got the enemy. Yeah. And he says, this is what we're fighting against. Yep. Yeah. So now climb, so they're making a little bit of progress. Uh, Jobs addresses skeptics and detractors head on in a speech at Macworld showing how much healthier Apple Apple is now. Mm-hmm. So just showing the, the progress and all that. Yep. And he's doing this through, which I guess we're not conveying too well, but this is all through ceremony, speeches, symbols, yep. and everything like that. Yep. Good. And then finally, when they arrive, this is when Jobs pulls out the, the mock funeral. So he's got the old. Okay, sorry, mate. Yeah, good. <laughs> so he's got a coffin there and saying, you know, all you laggards, you can die pretty much with this, yeah. this old, old way <laughs> yeah, of exactly. developing. But, you know, this is, this is the new way of doing things in, at, for Apple. And um, yeah, the rest is history. It That's it. They and, arrived. Yeah, they arrived. And then they re dreamed, obviously, and yeah. they created a whole bunch of new products. And, and they were all good back then, weren't they? Oh, fuck. <laughs> Bring back jobs. Bring back jobs. <laughs> Don't buy Apple. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, so, mate, yeah. How, how do we go then? Do we, I think that's sort of the end of the book, isn't it? Do we explain it well? I reckon that was good. Yeah. Mate, I yeah. didn't read that bit, so I, I learned a lot <laughs> throughout that. Yeah, I was, I was a lot of winging it there. <laughs> no, you were. <laughs> so no. as we said, so each each section, so the dream, leap, fight, climb, arrive, and then re-dream. So they give specific examples of the different types of speeches, stories, ceremonies, and symbols you use. And then there's the, the case study. So they use things like IBM, yep. uh, Steve Jobs, obviously, Rackspace, a whole bunch of different... Starbucks stuff. was a big Starbucks, one. Starbucks, yeah. Howard Schultz or whatever. So you use case studies throughout. Some of them I might have just real quickly looked over. Yeah, I started doing that. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, we read every book fully, but... Some of the case studies... Are, yeah, yeah just we got the point. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah, man, it's... No, I think... Yeah, it's a good book. If you, I mean, you can definitely get something out of it if you, if you're trying to do something real, real big. If you're like a fucking, if your goals are to change the world, then this book's for you, I guess. Yeah, I'd yeah, say. for sure. And man, as that hot princess from uh, Lord of the Rings said, she said, "Anyone, anyone can do, anyone, anyone can, can change, change the world, world, no matter how small." Yeah, so. and uh, yeah, we can all be like that hot princess <laughs> as well. That's it. I wouldn't mind meeting her. Um, Should we get her on? We'll get her on. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, man, that's, well, is that about it? Yeah, that's about Anymore? it for me. Yeah, yeah. sweet. So, should we illuminate <laughs> yep. symbols, ceremonies, and songs? That's <laughs> fucking lootly. <laughs> so, yeah, fuck. This task was appointed to you, Frodo of the Shire. If you do not find a way, no one will. What is? Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm. Middle. What could be? It could be this. Mm. Yeah. End. It's the end. It's a new bliss. Uh. That's right, motherfucker. New bliss. Yeah.